Oh, that's it. We are done. And we got to speed it up one time. Uh, since we're done all three, I guess I'll do my little uh, thing, overview about what I think about the entire thing. Uh, the entire trilogy as it is now. And uh, I guess uh, I should start with, um, I guess the full reason I, I kind of didn't do it immediately when it was launched. Like did did my little brutal walkthrough. Um, I mean, I, I really didn't like Heart of the Swarm all that much. To be honest, and I didn't want to just kind of go through Legacy of the Void complaining, but however, I, you know, now that I played it again, it actually was pretty good. Um, it wasn't as good as Wings, and it's probably as not as good as it could be. I mean, I, I still really hate the story, but it's, it's pretty close to, I mean, being semi-decent, I guess. Uh, but I'll talk about, I'll talk more about the campaign and some other stuff right now, though. Um, so as for the storyline, um... I mean, I think it's been my stance for every single game they've done. I don't like their storytelling anymore. I, I just don't. Um, I find it to be kind of predictable and kind of like really kind of bad. Like, there's a lot of depth to the storyline in uh, uh, StarCraft 1, but in 2, it's just like they're all getting together and fucking uh, <laughs> kind of uh, like, like they're, they're mishmash of the same thing. Uh, essentially, uh, is is my problem with it. It's like they're all, like for for example, these last three missions. Like, what was we all had the same objective, same goals, um, but that, like they were all doing the same thing. Like, what the fuck? Um, opposed to you know, number one, there was like a whole lot of internal politics. Uh, you know, Confederation dealt with like you know when the Confederation was overthrown for the Dominion. Um, you know, there was like. It was like a, a, an eternal problem for that race, but the minute you went to like another one, it that that race didn't care. It didn't get affected, or like you know, Overmind got killed, kind of a thing. And even when they kind of teamed up, it was only like like splinter groups that would do it, like uh, basically Rainer and Tastar against you know the will of the rest of their race, kind of thing. Not like all the entire races get together and we all live in one happy, like fucking super future where everything is diverse and all that. Like it's it was more interesting when they were, um, they had their own internal politics and things that made them unique. Now there's nothing that makes them unique anymore, and so I think they just made it trash in, with regards to that. And it, they removed all of the grittiness as well. The grittiness is completely gone. Uh, it's now more of like a joke, like the fucking evil character. Like this is the same problem that that Diablo three had, which is that the characters would fucking cackle at you at every turn you know it's like why just i don't even know so wasn't a big fan of the story um as for the campaign itself i still like the campaign uh campaign was pretty good uh i mean you know what if you take a uh, brood war or anything like that and you kind of translate that same thing to today it would probably be pretty boring because I mean, the AI in that is kind of meant to be defeated. Like, they start basically with, like, a whole bunch of shit that could defeat you. They just kind of sit there and wait for you. And, I don't know, it's just not a lot of depth for the missions with that regard. Uh, at least in this, it's like you get some interesting scenarios. Rather than kill every last enemy building kind of a thing. Uh, you know, you get uh, some of those... Uh, I, I really like the unit upgrades and stuff. Uh, all, all things considered, like... Um, Unit upgrades were like great. It's kind of fun to, to play around with that, especially in this game when it was like uh, particularly balanced. I mean, I, I remember in Heart of the Swarm, not a lot of thought was put into it, so it was always like jumping brood or something else. Mexican jumping brood was a joke in that one, uh, but this one it was actually kind of like there there were some there were some choices, and I kept iterating the same point, which is that I mean it doesn't matter what you pick in this game because they're all pretty good choices. Um, I mean, some are better for some missions, but Overall, like, I, I could never say, like, that you you were at a severe disadvantage for picking, like, the robotics-based stuff, for example. So, I mean, overall, that's pretty good. Uh, I just I just found the easiest way of trying to get through things. But as I said, I really like the variety here. Um, the bad part about the campaign is that there was a lot of recycling. And in that respect, um, I didn't think it needed to be three games. I can tell you right now, uh, this could have been two easily. If you... I mean, there wasn't a lot of plot points that happened. 
uh, when you think about it. Like, it just, you know, I, I, I could think back on, on the plot points in StarCraft and be like, oh, the um, Arcturus Minx uh, left Karagon on the planet, betrayed everyone. Uh, now you want to get out of there. Uh, or like, you know, Protoss, uh, a fall of ire kind of a thing. You know, and th th those are like some big events that happened during the campaign. Uh, not just necessarily at the end. Or like Stukov um, betrays you and then he turns out to be the good guy. And Duran kills him and Duran's the bad guy kind of thing. I absolutely, I, I really like Duran. Duran was such a great character and in this game he was, he was fucking trash and a comic villain. Uh, that, that was the most disappointing part. Yeah, I thought he was one of the most interesting characters. Um, more about his mysteriousness than anything. Uh, I wish the original writers had done stuff for it, but we have the, the new Blizzard writers, which are really bad. Uh, they, they, they don't want to take any risks. They don't want to make anything too complicated or out there because it's, like it's more like an action movie than anything, the storyline. Uh, more about the uh, campaign. Um, uh, yeah, it definitely could have been squished down to it, when you remove all the filler missions it could have been two games and like you know nine missions each race uh the same format i think by making it like one race for you for each game they stretched it too much to the point where it got boring to play the same race opposed to you know what they could have done which is basically like hey you nine missions switch to another one nine missions switch to another one you know so i thought that wasn't very good um but, you know, I, I don't think it was a decision that the creative uh, people behind this made. I think it was just, uh, they, they pretty much an announced it when the when, they, when it was originally coming out. Wings was coming out. They're like, hey, this is just the Terran one. And now we're going to make, I hope they never do this again, by the way. Just, just make three separate campaigns in each of their own $40 package, which totally wasn't worth it, to be honest. Maybe Legacy of the Void was just because you get some more th uh, other things, but yeah. Um, but, you know... The campaign actually had difficulty levels. Uh, I actually had to try a lot of the time. Uh, difficulty can vary sometimes. Uh, it wasn't necessarily balanced, but it, uh, you know, the attempt was there, and it was better than, you know, it's a pretty good RTS game, all things considered. I mean, there's not a lot of great RTS games that come out these days. I can't think of very many. Um, I mean, I'm not going to count anything made by uh, that's associated with EA because EA is a fucking cancer, so. Uh, I just, I don't want to touch EA stuff, so it doesn't leave a lot, because, uh, like, when you, when you think of EA, you think of Red Alert, and I, I didn't do much Red Alert at all, you know, um, so there's that, so, overall, I think it was the best they could have done, and it was actually still pretty good, they made it pretty interesting overall, but, as I said, could have been condensed into two games, and definitely, uh, could have been a better story, the story was just, I hated it. It was like the worst part of this whole thing. All right, yeah, here we are. We're, we're out now. All right, so with that being said, um, I don't know what you guys thought of me doing like a kind of a walkthrough series. Um, I mean, I've done it. This is my third time doing it, and uh, obviously it's uh, stuck around a little bit. Uh, but I I like doing it. It was it was it was pretty fun. Um, it, it was, I, I think it was kind of neat, because what, what I do is I, I essentially get kind of, I guess, my money's worth in a way, because what I do is I, I I play the mission first to just to beat it. Um, then I play it again after, possibly several times to figure out a good strategy on Brutal. Then I do it, then I record it for on Brutal. And so the, my mileage varies based upon um, how difficult it is. Like, for example, the last one I just did was, um, I think it took me about five times. I started with, like, Ultralisks and stuff. And then that wasn't working, it just kind of fell apart, and then I'm like, well, like, why not just kill them right away? And Because I, I didn't know how strong they got, so I, I cr try crazy things. And then I realized, okay, that worked pretty well, okay. And then, like, I, I keep adding to it. So yeah, it took me about five or six times for me to figure out that kind of path. And I think it worked, uh, it worked pretty well, overall. But, um... I mean, that's that's my mileage, and yours might vary too, because I guess you might go and get all the, um, I mean, you can go after all the achievements, I'm sure that's also, you know, a couple of hours worth there, and then you want to go through it on Brutal, maybe it takes you a couple of attempts, so, you know, I guess it's not that bad, um, I'll just say, like, I hated Heart of the Swarm so much, um, I mean, it says 27 missions, but that's a total lie, because <clears throat> it counts those, uh, ones where you select, uh, um, whatever the mutations ones. 
So you get to try both variants. And they actually counted that here, which is pathetic, because that, that is not scale on difficulty level whatsoever. Uh, you could be playing a Brutal, and this is like the easiest shit you've ever done. So it's like, uh, yeah. So that's it for that. And, um, I mean, I, I was more entertained with this than I thought I would be. As I said, it was Art of the Swarm. I kind of came into Legacy of the Void uh, the first time I ran through it. I think I just wanted to hate it, just because I hated Heart of the Swarm. Um, and I think that's why I decided not to bring it to YouTube initially, but... Uh, I mean, it was requested so much that I just decided, ah, you know what, I'll do it. And then I'm like, oh, it's actually not that bad. Uh, like, I promised myself I wouldn't complain in the middle of it, which is what I was doing during Heart. I'm like, I fucking, like, you could tell I, there was something I didn't like about it, about it at all. But like I say, I actually liked I like I like the Spear of Dune abilities and all that kind of stuff. It was actually, it was actually quite nice. Um, so the unit variations, even though we kind of didn't use anything other than the, the Shadow Cannon, uh, Immortals and things like that. So I did like it so much, and it means we're going to do this. I've already gotten this, I've already run through it, uh, so we're doing Nova uh, Covert Ups. Actually coming up next. Um, that is the next thing on my list uh, right now. So, And you know what, I'll keep doing the RTS campa uh, campaigns at least. Um, I'm not touching... I mean, I've n never touched World of Warcraft. I fucking hate MMOs, so like, you're never going to see that out of me. I mean, I did a little bit of Overwatch, but Overwatch isn't exactly fun for me. It's like... I mean... I like it a little bit, but it I can't sit down and do it a lot just because it's not that interesting to me. And honestly, Blizzard's balancing job with some of their games is um, crap now. Also, Diablo 3 is total trash. It still remains to this day. I, I don't care what anyone says, I hate it. And you know, it's funny because at the end of my... I, I, did, a, um, I did a series on, on Diablo 3. And at the end of that, I said I liked it. And... To be honest, that was just because that was my first run, and then every other run was annoying as fuck, and I actually gave up on it, like, after, like, two times or something, and I hated the balancing of that game and everything. And so, like, I had a video series up where I said I liked it, but in actuality, pretty much the second time I tried running through it, I'm like, this sucks, actually. Um, and, and these things kind of don't hit me necessarily right away, which is why I usually have to try to be more uh, critical about it, or I need to do my final thoughts a little bit after uh, I do something, so that's it for that. Uh, so, as I said, we'll just do the Blizzard RTS games, which I honestly think just come at a premium now, because this is like, here we go, like 60 bucks, 40 bucks, 40 bucks, and 15 bucks. And I always think they're always a little bit more than I would like them to be in terms of money, because, I mean... Uh, it's just, you, you don't feel like you're getting full value out of it necessarily. I mean, this one, I think, was probably the closest I think I, I've gotten to. Uh, okay. Wings and Legacy, I'd say, are close to full value, I'd say, out of it. Because we also did get, like, co-op and a bunch of other stuff, I think, from Legacy. Um, I'm pretty sure it came from Legacy. And um, I'll speak about the co-op in a second, but um, Nova was 15 bucks, and that's nine missions. Uh, so I don't know if it's always worth it. I don't know... I mean, you judge for yourself if you're going to get your money's worth out of it. Um, I mean, I think I did just because I do it multiple times and I made a video series on it. But, I mean, if you can pass on this stuff and it'll be fine. Like, it's you're, like there's, there's, there's a lot of games where I'm going to say, hey, you know, um, this is great and you, you should probably pick it up for yourself after, after I run through it. But, I mean, there's a lot of competition these days, so you don't necessarily, like, it's not... It's you're playing the you're paying the Blizzard tax. Let me just go with that. Um, that's it for the campaign. Now they also released this co-op mode, and um, this co-op mode is actually probably one of the best things that they've ever done in this game. And it's not even that good. Um, I mean, it's not great. I mean, there's only so much missions you can do with regards to this stuff. Like, there's they added a new one now, uh, but there's this is how many missions you have. I think you have more co-op commanders than you have actual missions. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I'm not gonna count it now, but they have like these three right here were five bucks each and i don't think they were worth five bucks they were worth more like half that and so i would, I would seriously not recommend picking that up uh, not getting that. unless there's something that like you looked at and you thought it was really kind of good then fine go ahead i mean i just stream it and it was it was kind of memey so i fucking decided to pick him up i mean i hate zerg and i fucking got abathur abathur was a pain in the ass i fucking hate him but, but you know what? I liked it enough that everything's like almost max level except for Zagara. 
So there's that. Um, and if you're curious about how the co-op plays, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a separate series on this, but I do have a stream archive channel. Uh, if you look at Michael at Stream Archive, uh, I have a. You just search that up, and you search on that channel for anything SU2 co-op related, or just I guess look up co-op. Uh, there's a mutation we do every week. Uh, I mean, this one's related to turkey shoot and uh, sharing is caring. We've done this one. It was actually hilarious. Uh, we do this every week, me and Kent. Um, we kind of run through that, and whenever there's a new commander, we play with that, like, for a fair bit. So, I'm just telling you how that goes. I don't think there's enough effort put into this in terms of the actual missions. They just decide to make a bunch of commanders just because it's the only way they can charge for it, I think. I mean, even if uh, you own the base game, you don't even get all these people. I'm pretty sure it's like you get one of these guys per... Or no, no, you start with these three. And you get one of these guys per game you own or something. I think you get two of these for Swarm and then two of these for Legacy. Something like that. Uh, they... <clears throat> I don't know. They, they really want your money now. And I mean, this is going to be even further um, evidenced by this loading screen. No. Uh, by this collection screen. Where, like, uh, you now have skins. So... Uh, 250 get a you can get a fucking marauder skin or do you want a roach skin sure i mean they just have a bunch of shit here oh stalker skin judicator pylons collector's edition stuff so it's always about squeezing that extra money out of you you know kind of a thing Nukes ready. Not this. pretty cringy shit additional pylons required so like oh five bucks you can get our tennis to tell you shit we require additional pylons i mean i I hate the Zerg announcer, but I wouldn't pay five bucks to replace her. We're gonna need more pylons. So, it's pretty bad. I fucking hate Aisha, or whatever the fuck she is. Then they have like a bunch of oh, look at Moto Icon packs, like fucking two fifty for this. So they're they're really into the nickel and diming thing now, and they're also adding uh, loot boxes to this game. I should you not. It's from Overwatch, and they're gonna add it soon. So they're gonna probably even have more skins and random shit like that. So that's gonna be great. Um, you don't pay for avatars and decals, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, I overall... That's the direction they're going in, that's what they choose. Um, I don't know, they could do a lot of better things with this, but I don't know. As I said, the co-op is, is kind of worth it, and if you have the game, maybe give that a try. I, I, I think that's actually the best feature of this whole thing. But a lot of the dialogue gets really fucking irritating after a while, so... You can only do so much. Uh, then we have, um, I guess to talk about the multiplayer, uh, it was in the news recently that, uh, uh StarCraft 2's, uh, uh, multiplayer is officially dead now. Uh, well, sort of dead, on its way out, because there was a whole thing of, um, uh, some very big Korean sponsors and players, I think, retired and pulled out, and they're no longer doing things for, uh, SE2 here. Uh, so that's, that's a big problem. I mean, I paid attention to the competitive scene for this for, like, the first six months I think this came out. And then I just got bored of it, because it's just, I, I don't know. It's not particularly well balanced. I mean, they keep doing these very big radical changes. I remember when I first started playing this, I actually got into Platinum. And I think at the time there was only Platinum and then Diamond, so I was, like, almost up there. Uh, in terms of, like, the good leagues, but... Um... I mean, the way I worked this all this shit out. So I remember I played, I think, a lot of Terran, because I, I really, Terran's like my favorite race. And uh, I mean, I think one of the biggest issues I ever had was like dealing with Void Rays, Void Ray Cheese. And Void Rays were like really strong. So I'd constantly go like, oh, you know, he's building Void Rays. Let's go make the counter, which is Marines. Uh, no, they're not the counter. Uh, let's make Vikings. Uh, no, they're not the counter either. Well, what the fuck's the counter? Well, not letting them make Vikings in the first place. Sorry, not not letting them make Void Rays in the first place, not Vikings. So, it, they were, like, fucking really strong. And I, I don't know what I did with regards to that. I could never beat, basically, Void Rays. Uh, I remember that being my biggest issue. This is when the first game first came out. They've been changed since then. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't play the multiplayer as much anymore. I just remember that being a big problem. Um... So that's that's all for that. Um, I don't know, I just I stopped paying attention to it. I mean, I remember one of my favorite um, SD1 pros, which was a boxer and all the crazy shit he would do with like EMPs with the science vessels and uh, like microing certain things and 
remember vultures he used to use spider mines to hop over like pylon walls and things like that the guy was fucking a monster and i never really saw that in anybody in this one you know i i just it's just whatever um so that was it for multiplayer i i mean you know what you can have fun with it i'm sure uh if that's if it's up your alley but i don't think it's a serious thing really gonna be anymore um I mean, they tried, and I think they failed at this point. I mean, as I said, you can disagree all you want, and you know what? Honestly, if you like the multiplayer, and fucking have fun. It's uh, what am I to say? I don't play it, so I can't tell you much. I just t I'm just telling you my opinion on the scene right now, and the scene is um, uh, not doing incredibly well uh, right now. It's it's at it's at it's at its low right now. Let me just tell you that. Arcade. Arcade is something interesting to show. So, um, if you've watched all my stuff, you'd know I was pretty... I was a, I was a, I was a figure in the modding community for um, the first game, as well as, uh, well, somewhat at the beginning of the second game. Uh, so, the first game I had, I owned a website. I wasn't like, I didn't make a shit ton of maps, but I did, I did show some of them that I did on my channel, but... I did own a, a, a website where a lot of people did have a lot of like creative um, kind of attitude towards it. And also I made the basis of the Special Forces Elite maps, um, which I've talked about, I'm sure, at some point. I'm, it's a part of my ego, what can I say? Um, and I mean, I think that the editor became too... I think it was too complicated, to be honest, because this is right now the open games right now. And this is like, considering the amount of effort and time that went into this whole thing, like that the people have to make this stuff and all that kind of crap. I mean, you know, this is not that many people playing right now, to be honest. I mean, actually it could be more. I don't, uh, how many people, does it actually tell me who's online? Yeah, it doesn't even tell me who's online. I mean, there's a second arcade channel. Some people on this channel. I think these are people who are looking at games and stuff like that, but it's hard to tell from this, but this is not nearly as big as, uh, as uh, I mean, it StarCraft 1's um, custom map system was really great. I mean, and, and I'll, I'll explain that more in a little bit. It's not just nostalgia speaking. I mean, I don't kid myself when I say, like, it StarCraft Brood War was a really, it's a really fucking old game at this point and it would not translate well to modern day at all. And I, I, I don't even load it, I don't even load it up anymore to play custom maps. But part of the problem is people do some amazing things here, you know. People people really do do some really crazy shit. Uh, but here's the issue: you can't sell what you make, and the editor is so so complicated now that you need to basically have like three programming degrees to use. Okay, maybe that's an exa exaggeration, but it requires a lot of time and it requires a lot of knowledge. The StarCraft One editor and somewhat the Warcraft Three as well. I mean that those ones were like um, they didn't like they were they were simple enough that you could learn it and not have to be like a technical genius to know how to, to know how to do stuff. In this one in particular, you really have to know what you're doing. Um, and I would know, as I said, I've made the uh, the first map for it. And I'll I'll show you this right here. So this is popular for like um, uh, it was popular for like I don't know a, a month or something. But the, the key was I left it open uh, for others to edit, and then eventually other people made, um, they made variations of it. Uh, and so, I mean, my I, I didn't really want to do anything else with it other than just do the initial version. I'm just like, yeah, I'll just leave it open. People will just fucking learn from it. They'll make their own versions. That's exactly what happened. And I mean, there's always appears to be some version of it that's played now, uh, even if they don't necessarily credit me with anything i mean i don't even know if this one's ba based upon brought to you by creep and death nice i mean i put my own name on my my thing so i can't really say anything uh like like see like mike lot right there i have a huge ego i actually used to have a couple more maps here but for some reason they're all gone uh or something i don't know what the fuck happened with them uh i had like a dodge the nukes map but that's gone now i don't know why but it's whatever but anyways, um, the whole thing is, it's so complicated, right? And so, we live in 2016 now, it's not 1998 anymore. I mean, the, the whole appeal in 1998 with, like, loading up Brood War and just, like, playing a custom map is that it was a free game that was a part of a game that you already installed. So, you could play, like, a kind of a cheesy RPG map, or you could play a bound map, or you could play a, um, 
I don't know, like a dodgeball map. Like they, they had everything uh, for that. It was really, really rough on the edges, but it worked. I mean, I even tried to make a chess map, I think, in, in Brood War as well. It, like you could do that. Um, you'd have to like really cheese the engine, but it was kind of neat. And then in Warcraft 3, you had like things like um, Dota being made, right? And I mean, Dota took off, like now you have Dota 2, so that obviously took off in some regard. Like even, I didn't play much Warcraft 3 Customs or Dota, but I still respect the editor and I still respect the fact that, hey, there's a really great game that came out of it. So here they obviously anticipated the same thing, but that just didn't happen. People don't really care about this game as much for the editor as much as I think Warcraft 3 and, and Brood War had communities around it. Because as I said, it's like, look, you're, you're a games developer. If you can program something in this, you can probably program something in Unity or Source or something like that. And you could probably just go make another game there. The only thing you get out of this place is you get um you you get to use their assets. You get to use Blizzard's assets. Because now you have like Steam, you have like like I have a I have a list of like a thousand Steam games, half of which I have not even played. So if I'm like really bored, like I don't need to play, you know, Entropy T D, there's like on the internet there's games this games on steam you know things like that i mean it's 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 fun it's entertaining but there's other places they have a shit ton of competition now um and i think part of the appeal of of these maps was that you know there wasn't so many games like this back then you couldn't do this so i remember cat and mouse that was actually one of my favorite starcraft one maps maybe we should try that sometime but um it's just, it's one of those things that I think, I think the times have changed and uh, that's, that's the problem. So, I mean, uh, let's, let's see what Stark test is. Completely devoid of any description whatsoever. Okay, no reviews. I don't even know what this was. I'm guessing this is something I was working on at some point before I uh, quit. Oh, well, I, I, I did mapping for a while, as I said, and then I kind of gave up on it. Uh, so. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, I, I eventually it was supposed to shoot or something. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, holy shit. Pressing tab does all this. I think I was playing around with the fucking backgrounds. <laughs> that's pretty fucking sweet. Holy shit. Amon, why? My eyes. Just trying a bunch of keys. Oh shit. Okay. I, I I just fucking completely broke it. Oh there we go. Okay, I fixed it. So uh, I'm just seeing if there's any keys at work. The only thing I could change was like the backgrounds. I wonder where this arrow goes. Yeah, that's kinda cool. It's like an objective marker. I remember this. This is supposed to be some kinda like over the over the top like uh, fighter game. And then like, uh, oh yeah, a Hyperion shoots at you. And you're, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, it's fairly inaccurate. Well, yeah, because it's, it's supposed to be a dogfighting game. So like, multiple players are supposed to kind of like, attack this battlecruiser. And they're, like, they obviously can't shoot it. I was actually pretty proud of this. But the amount of uh, fucking around you need to do in the data editor um, was ridiculous because, like, to, to make it do things like this, it required like a week. And this doesn't look like a lot, but yeah. It, it was a lot, trust me. I'm actually, yeah. So this is as far as I got with this that it would appear. I was making like an objective marker and shit, so players would have to run after the ship. I actually kind of like this, this is really neat. I can't control that unit. Stand it by. Oh, there you go. You can kind of, you can kind of see the orders I gave it. Like it's just constantly moving in the direction of the mouse. There you go. But you can't really unselect it. I mean, the engine has changed so much, though. That, like, obviously this is um, a little bit different now. It's kind of cool, though, that I, that I did that. I, I'm glad I started that up again. But, it's like I said. Um, I think it was too complicated and things like that. So, with that being said, I don't think I have much else to say on this matter. Uh, just know that I will visit more and more of the... Uh, I guess RTS campaigns as they come out, uh, and I I don't know. As I said, I can't recommend or not recommend it to you because it's just too. It's probably a little bit too pricey for what you're getting. So, 
it depends as i said your mileage your mileage may vary um and so yeah so hope you enjoyed let me know what you thought about like this whole like walkthrough um like format i think i've asked before but i don't know if i should just keep doing it because it's kind of i guess interesting for me to run through it multiple times and get like a good way of doing it so i can beat the entire thing a brutal sort of thing so all right thanks for watching take care